How can you quickly and consistently color correct your underwater video footage using the color wheels in Final Cut Pro 10? That's what we look at in today's video, coming up. Hi and welcome back to the Underwater Filmmaking School and today's Final Cut Pro 10 tutorial. Now, a little while ago, I watched a video of my friend Justin, aka the Critter Hunter here on YouTube, where he explained his method and his process of color correcting his underwater video footage using the Lumetri panel within Premiere Pro. Now, this is great if you're a Premiere Pro user, and if you are, and you are struggling with color correcting your underwater video footage, I suggest you go and check out Justin's video. I'll link it up here in the corner so you can go and check that out. It's gonna give you plenty of tips on how you can improve your process in color correcting that footage. But what if you're not a Premiere Pro user? What if you're a Final Cut Pro user like myself? Well, don't worry, I've got you covered. In today's video, I'll take you through my preferred process when color correcting my underwater video footage. Let's get started by jumping straight into Final Cut Pro 10. All right, so here we are in Final Cut Pro 10, and I've got three clips prepared that we'll go through today and color correct using the color wheels, the uh, method that I prefer and I recommend um, for color correcting underwater video footage inside of Final Cut Pro 10. And I've got, as I said, three clips. The first one here is a buddy of mine behind a um, cuttlefish. Then we've got a clip of a coral reef with some um, reef fish on top of it. And we've got a sweet lip in the third clip on top of a coral bommie. Now all these three clips, they have been taken with different cameras. This very first one of the cuttlefish and my buddy that was taken with my GH5S in the Naughty Cam housing, my standard um, rig when filming underwater. This second one here, the coral reef with the reef fish that was taken with the Paralens dive camera plus and the last one was taken with the Osmo Action, the DJI Osmo Action. Now you can see that the first one here, the GH5S clip and the Osmo Action clip, they look very flat. And that's because I filmed these clips in a flat profile. It's a custom profile that I've used on uh, this clip here that I always use when filming with my GH5 underwater. And this is a... Um, a standard profile that is within the Osmo Action and it's called Cinelike D, um, which gives a very flat picture that we can then work on in post-production. This one here, the Paralens Dark Camera Plus, um, is actually recorded using their internal DCC, the dynamic color correction, um, and very typical for the Paralens image, it is a lot more saturated than when you shoot in a flatter profile. So let's get on to the very first clip. So we'll select the frame that we want to have as a reference. Let's take this one here and then we'll open up our um, scopes by pressing command seven. We want to make them nicely visible and you can see what I said before, this being a very flat image, you can see in the Luma um, scope here that um, most of the information is centered quite nicely. So what we can do is um, just widen that information a little bit, bring some more information into the shadows as well as into the highlights. So we are changing over here to our color panel and depending on how you've set your uh, Final Cut Pro uh, 10, you will have different options appear here at the start. There's different um, options that you can have. You can either have a um, color table, you can have color wheels, which are these ones here. You can have curves and uh, color curves and hue and saturation curves as well. Now, I like to use the color wheels because I think that they are very easily used and they give a very nice result um, in, in a very short amount of time that you have to put into them. So the way I do this is looking here at the scopes at the lowest part, the darkest part of the image. And then I go over to the color wheels, grab my shadows and bring the um, luminance value all the way down. 
until it actually is just above the zero line here. Then I grab my highlight wheel and I bring up the highlights all the way just below the 100 mark here. And what I can do now is use my midtones to put some more contrast into the image or lighten it up a little more. And that is really kind of what you like the image to look. I like it to be a little more contrasty for this one here. So I'll put a little more contrast in there. And that's basically it. That's my color correction, my basic color correction on this image. And if we look at what it looked before, and what it looks now, there's quite a bit of a difference. And it was very easy, it didn't take not even a minute to color correct this clip. Now if I wanna go further than that, if I wanna put some extra work into this, for example, let's say, I don't think there is enough red color in this clip, I wanna increase some red color there as well, I can do that too. I can create a second of these um, color wheel um, panels here, basically. And then this is like, imagine, try to imagine it like being a layer. So on the first layer, we are working with the luminance, with the highlights, the shadows and the midtones. And now on the second one, we, for example, want to put some color shifts into the image. So let's say I want to have the midtones um, more towards the reddish side. So I grab the midtones, the middle um, point there and drag it to the red part of the color wheel so that's gonna give me some more red color in there and it's a subtle change but if i turn it off you'll see that i do get more red color in particular down in this area here which is my midtones let's say i want to have the um, blue a little bluer i grab the highlights pull them more towards the blue side and my backdrop, my background turns a bit more into the bluish side. Again, turning that off, you can see we're a little more greenish here and we'll turn into more something like a blue, um, ocean blue background there. Um, you can obviously play around with all these uh, color wheels a lot more. Um, you can also increase or decrease the saturation. Uh, you've got a master wheel up here that will actually um, manipulate the entire image, or you have the separate shadows, highlights, and midtones where you can say, okay, I really want the highlights to be more saturated, so I'll bring that all the way up. This looks a little artificial to me now, but for the sake of demonstration, and let's say we want to um, just decrease the saturation in the shadows so we can bring this all the way down and um, this is what we get here. It's probably not what I would go for really um, but it uh, can be a look that you want to achieve and you can do that quite easily by using the color wheels. Right so if we see what we have created disabling both of our color wheels this is our original clip, the original footage that we had. And this is what it looks like um, after putting like two minutes of work into the clip and color correcting it a little bit. A fair bit of a difference. Um, at the same time, not a lot of effort that you have to put in there. So let's go to the next clip, which is our um, clip from the parallels and selecting a frame there, going to the color wheels panel and if you look over here at the um, scopes you will see that um, all the luminance is distributed a lot more evenly here um, to start off with uh, because it's not been filmed in a flat profile that's the reason why that is as it is so there's not really a, a lot that we can do with um, the luminance here we can try to bring up the luminance a little bit just the uh, um, highlights a little bit up maybe bring the shadows a tiny bit down, but I wouldn't even do that too much. Um, and what you can do here, what I don't really like is the kind of greenish background. So what I would do in such a case is use the, um, the um, highlights wheel and I would pull that um, mark towards the blue section, which makes the entire background a little more bluish. Um, you can also try to do that with 
the um, midtown seeing if that does anything this is really a bit of a trial and error thing if it doesn't really work let's see if we can pull the midtowns a little bit towards the reddish so we can we can get a little bit more red color into the foreground all right yep and if we look at what it looked before and what it looks now it's cleaned up quite a bit Personally, I think it's a little too saturated. So I will personally, normally on these Paralens clips, I will just use the master wheel and pull down on the saturation just a little bit. Not much, but just a little bit to give it a slightly flatter look. I think it's it looks actually much, much nicer this way than if you, let's say, increase the saturation. You can definitely do that as well, but it is kind of a um, experimental look in my opinion. So. I would definitely pull down on the saturation just a little bit. It's a bit too much. Just like this, a tiny bit. And if you look now um, at it, maybe you can even increase the saturation on the midtones a little bit so that foreground pops a little bit more. And there we go, that's not too bad. And now if we look at how it looked at the beginning, what it looks now. Again, about two or three minutes of work involved in actually creating this look or color correcting this clip. Moving on to clip number three, and clip number three is this one of a sweet lip on top of a um, boulder coral that was filmed in Australia um, about a year and a half ago. So same thing here, this is filmed with the DJI Osmo Action in a flat profile. So you can see the curves, or not the curves, sorry, the scopes over here, that they are very um, compact, so we need to widen them. So selecting a uh, frame that we want to work on, let's take this one here and we'll expand and drag down the shadows so they nearly reach the zero mark. We'll pull up the highlights so they nearly reach the 100 mark and then we've got our mid-tones that we can use to fine-tune the exposure and stuff a little bit so let's make this let's make it put it somewhere around here now this is not very saturated in my opinion we've got the exposure pretty much right now but we could use some more saturation so what i can do is i can say i want to put some more saturation in the highlights so we'll put some more in there maybe a little more saturation in the midtones and let's put a little more into the shadows there as well Obviously, I could also use the master wheel to just put, in general, more saturation into the image, but it's going to inflict all the parts of the image if I use the individual um, selectors on the shadows, the highlights and the midtones, I can just be a little more precise with my adjustments. So looking at the um, difference from like our original clip as it was when we imported the clip to what we've got with a couple of adjustments, that is actually quite a bit of a difference there. Now I also want to mention that the color wheels are not something that is specific to Final Cut Pro 10. They also exist within um, Premiere Pro and obviously also within DaVinci Resolve and they work in the same way in these two other editing programs too. And there you go, a very simple and straightforward process for color correcting your underwater video footage within Final Cut Pro 10 using the integrated color wheels. Now hopefully this video, this tutorial was useful to you and you got something out of it. And if that's the case, please do smash that like button and also hit that subscribe button so you're not missing out on any future content that will be uploaded here on the channel. If you have any other questions regarding color correcting your underwater video footage within Final Cut Pro 10, feel free to put it down in the comment section below. Thank you very much for your time and until next time, stay safe and dive often. I'll see you soon.